Jared Lysak child R case is set to go to court next week. And just wanted to update you on a document that came out that recapped the last court hearing that actually denied the defense's request to dismiss the case. So let's get right into it. Pardon me, I am having a lazy day. Oh, and by the way, it is, I just noticed it is SA Awareness Month. April is SA Awareness Month. And of course, this case, child R, is a form of SA. So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing is I interviewed Nashali Alma, who was the woman who was attacked at her own gym in January. And she's working toward legislation in Florida to have stricter penalties, possibly even life sentences, or SA. So if you haven't seen that interview, there's a link up here, and I'll also make sure to post a link in the description or the comments. All right, let's get right into it. So I saw this document from SF Investigate, so credit to him, he posted this on Twitter, and I saw it there. So here it says, in the 6th District Court of San Pete County, state of Utah, the plaintiff, which is the state of Utah, versus Jared Lysick, the defendant, the judge was Mandy Larson, It says the defendant filed a motion to dismiss. The motion was fully briefed and a hearing was held before the court via WebEx on March 8th, 2023. The court heard arguments and denied the motion based on the findings and analysis summarized herein. As an FYI, I actually did a recap of the hearing itself. This is probably, this is more, you know, legal jargon, but I did do a recap and I'm going to post a link here as well. And you can watch that if you'd like as well. Moving on, the amended information charges the defendant with one count of R of a child, a first degree felony, and alleges that the crime occurred on or between January 1st, 1992 and December 31st, 1992. Beginning May 1st, 1991, the applicable statute of limitations to bring charges for R of a child was within four years after the report of the offense to a law enforcement agency. And that's based on the Utah Court Code 76-1-302. And this is important. Because the the whole thing is about whether or not the incident occurred before or after the statute of limitations was changed. The defendant's motion to dismiss is based on due process grounds and statute of limitations grounds. The first prong of defendant's due process claim and his statute of limitations claim both rely on his claim that he the alleged crime must have occurred previous to the May 1st, 1991 change to the statute of limitations. Defendant's affidavit compares several of his life events with the victim's allegations and argue that the victim is describing a time prior to 1991. At this stage of the proceedings, the court has not taken any evidence and cannot accept defendant's affidavits as evidence. The court cannot find any rule that would allow it to take evidence in the form of affidavits or statements of fact in a motion to dismiss or reply memorandum. All the court can go by at this stage of the proceedings are the allegations as pled in the amended information, which alleges the crime occurred in 1992. Based on this information, the proper statute of limitations is four years from the time that the incident was reported to law enforcement. This statute was not applied ex post facto and the statute has not run as the alleged crime was reported to law enforcement within four years of filing. The defendant also argues that his due process rights are violated because evidence related to a joyriding incident from 1989 or 1990 has been lost or destroyed over time. This argument is not relevant at this juncture with the court proceeding with charges that are alleged to have occurred in 1992, not 1989. Defendant next argues that he cannot be charged as an adult for crimes committed while he was under 16 years old. This argument is moot as the charges are for crimes committed when defendant was either 16 or 17 years old. The state concedes that any sentence in this case would need to be in accordance with Utah Code 76-3-209. Finally, defendant raised an argument about consent, citing to this opinion from the court. It says the Supreme Court makes clear in that opinion that children under the age of 14 cannot legally consent to intercourse or sexual touching in the state of Utah. And here at the time of the alleged crime, defendant was 16 or 17 and the victim was 10. There can be no legal claim of consent because the victim was 10. For these reasons, defendant's motion to dismiss is denied. It is so ordered, dated 31st day of March 2023, signed by Tiffany Olson on behalf of Mandy Larson, who is the 6th District Court Judge. And then there was to get a notification. So I think the big one that a lot of us, we were talking on Twitter, you know, the whole part about the the defense attorney was using the age thing that talking about the the victim and consent and all that. And, and the judge was just like, when she made her conclusion, she was just like, the victim was 10 and therefore cannot consent. Like she just nipped that one in the butt. That was a big deal. 
So I just thought that was very, very interesting. Very, very interested to see what will happen in court on Wednesday, the 19th. I'll let you know, uh, as of right now, that court hearing is still set for that date. It was actually pushed back two weeks. Not sure why. I hope either way that justice is served in this case. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more empowering true crime updates. Stay safe, stay thriving, and have an empowering week. Bye for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. Thank you.